<laughs> Let's welcome in our guests in the segment. They deal with uh, millions as well. As a matter of fact, I think I heard that the Berkeley County budget for this upcoming year is about $50 million. County uh, Councilman Eddie Gokenauer. Eddie, good morning to you. Good morning. And Alan, we're going to have to pull that mic way closer to you. I don't think it's going to work around your notebook. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. All right. And County Administrator Alan Davis, they call him short timer around here because you have what, three months left? Three months. Three months to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm a road employee. Retired on active duty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for a moment you said rogue. Yeah, no, well, they, I've been called that too. <laughs> He's a rogue. Hey, can we call you commissioner now, Eddie, or do we have to wait until like uh, July 1st? Yet. Still isn't official well, law? I, I thought you made it official yet. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the law uh, regards whether the governor signs it or not becomes effective April 1st. Uh, according to the, the the legislation that was passed, then the council has to meet formally, mm -hmm. and they have to vote and decide whether they want to change it from council to commission. Eddie, Why does this How matter? are you going to vote on that, Eddie? Yeah, it's a done deal. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I actually I have I'm it on the agenda the for the first Thursday of, of April. So okay. if mm -hmm. they vote for it, then it will become official. Mr. Gilstrap, your question was? This seems like a distinction without a difference. Why is this important? Well, you get confused. I mean, every city council is, you know, called a city council, and and then all of a sudden you, oh, you're you're a city councilman. No, no, ma'am, I'm. We're not. We're we're a county council. Oh well, and then they get confused. Uh, even okay, even, so it's just semantics. There's no is. legal yes. difference no. between. No. Okay. No, and even even one of the senators got it confused when they were arguing the uh, the bill, and and they said exactly that's exactly what we're talking yep. about right there. There, so. there are 55 counties in the state, and Berkeley County is the only council in the entire state. So it's it's confusing. And you, that's because of the number of members on that well, particular council slash commission. Jefferson County has five, and they were five before the legislation had been in, introduced years ago. So right. they were able to stay as a count, mm -hmm. commission. Then the legislation changed, so then it went under Mr. Stubblefield's guidance. We went from three to five. Right. Legislation said they had to be called counsel. So it's it's confusing. For, so it's Bill's for fault. It is Bill's fault. <laughs> okay. All right. Just yeah. cut to the chase. Yeah. It's Bill's fault. I, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the way this is going so far. <laughs> let's keep it going. So uh, back, let's start with the budget. Uh, I don't know you guys have worked on this. Did we wind up with a figure of uh, fifty million or so? Yeah, fifty million one hundred thousand three hundred sixty-six dollars. And how does that compare to past budgets? Um, this this current budget year that we're in, fiscal year twenty-three, was forty-four million four sixty-one four forty-five. Um, the, the council is always very, very conservative when they um, uh, put their revenue projections together, and and you know you, you've got to give them uh, all the all the credit for how they manage their budget. Um, this uh, we, they actually reduced the levy rate this year again for the second consecutive year. Uh, in 2019, they reduced the levy rate from 1410 to 1406. Uh, for the current fiscal year 2023, we reduced it from 1406 to 1381. And for next fiscal year, the levy rate goes down once again from 1381 to 1339. Um, so they continue to provide the services, the much needed services. Uh, and, uh, and I think they, they're very, very good stewards of the, of the, of the tax dollars. So um, they, they fund it, um, all, most of the internal requests. Um, you know, there's there's things that I'm sure that Eddie will talk about that they would like to do in the areas of public safety that, you know, we, we're able to maintain what we have, but really can't um, expand in the areas of law enforcement and, and career firefighters like we, we, we would have. But um, the way code is right now, there's, there's very little we can do to generate much more revenue. Um, the levy rate by law is capped at 1430. Um, even if public, we went through public hearing and, and increased the rate to 1430, um, the amount of money that, that generates still wouldn't meet our, our public safety needs. So um, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's going to be an issue that um, future council, uh, councils will have to, to d decide how they're going to deal with. Uh, Alan, you mentioned the levy rate. Can you explain the levy rate, what, what lowering the levy rate does, what the numbers mean, and what it's based and on? And what is the levy on? The, the levy is on real and personal property taxes. Um, it, it typically, uh, in years past, and I've been here 18 years, 
Um, we've we pretty much doubled our budget in the past 18 years. We were at, uh, in, in 2005, um, we were at about 20, I don't know, 23, 24 million. And, and as I said, we go over 50 million next year. Um, the levy rate is, is on uh, personal and, and real estate taxes. Uh, in the past, um, real estate and personal property taxes uh, generated anywhere from 65 to 70 percent of the county's revenue. Um, this next fiscal year, um, it will generate slightly more than 50 percent. So um, the council's been very, um, very diligent in um, pursuing grants. Um, you know, the, the, we've worked with the state legislators to uh, make some changes to the transfer taxes, which, is, which has helped us. Um, you know, we, we, we've got this, the, the, the highest bond rating in, in the state. Um, our current bond rating is at AA2. Um, we're the highest, we have, of all the 55 counties, we have the highest bond rating of any county in the, in the state. Mong, Mong County just was downgraded. They were um, the, the only other AA2 uh, uh, county in the state that had uh, such a high bond rating. So that has allowed us to, to borrow money at a, at a discounted rate. Um, so, you, you know, I tell everyone it's, it's good to be Berkeley. The jump from 44 million to 50 million this year, what was mostly responsible for that, Alan? Um, that was that was primarily, you know, we, um, the, although the, the, the um, council decreased the levy rate from 1339 uh, from 1381, of course, real estate values have, have gone up. Uh, and there's been a lot of new property, new commercial and residential property that have, that have been put on the books. Um, so that's certainly that that increased um, real estate taxes from twenty six two to twenty eight four and change. Um, but twenty six two. What does that mean? 20, uh, twenty. I'm sorry. Twenty six point two million dollars uh, is what mm. we we were projected to collect this year uh, in property taxes, and we've exceeded that. Um, again, being very very conservative. Um, West Virginia law states that the five county council people or soon to be county commissioners, if um, they would run more than what the, the state considers a 3% deficit, um, they're personally liable for that deficit. <laughs> so and he's not lying. Yeah. <laughs> so when I've put revenue projections, I've always erred on the side of caution. And if they decide they want to get a little bit more aggressive and increase revenues, um, you know that's that's their decision my my goal is to always keep them out of trouble despite their best efforts sometime um so you know the the real estate taxes for next fiscal year um, are expected to be about 28.5 million dollars transfer taxes will remain strong um, we're starting to see a slight increase in in gas and oil severance tax um, Stop on that for just a moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because this has become a debated issue off the record in the Capitol, and that is the Southern counties saying, you want locality pay? Give us back our transfer taxes. We keep all of what we generate. You can have your locality pay. Do we need the money that desperately that well, we get from the transfer tax? They're giving away, the state's giving away our money that they should be taking those responsibilities for. You know, I have made the option... Look, you give us a one cent sales tax, we'll give that coal severance money back to those counties that need it desperately. Uh, and I'm sure that, that Boone County could use an extra two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But you know, you can't you can't give our money away. That's that's state money that's coming to the county and they want to use that the conversation was they want to use that money to offset uh, the state employees. Well, we support uh, I'm, I, I, maybe, maybe I better back up. I support locality pay. I, I think we need to call it something different. I think we need a, to call it a housing allowance uh, and do it by region. And that way, every year you could check the values of that county and adjust those numbers appropriately. Um, so, I, you know, I see the importance of maintaining a good workforce, you know, with, with our state employees from DHHR to the school system to state troopers to our, our jails, uh, Department of Highways. I support being able to 
uh, get their salaries out of a statewide pay program, which absolutely makes no sense. It's very frustrating uh, when they try to make one size fit all, and it, it simply does not. It does not fit, but you cannot give our coal severance tax away because that's not your money to give away. That's how I see it. Mm-hmm. All right. Alan, back to the revenue streams that led to $50 million. Um, you know, transfer taxes are, are strong. The, the, the legislation um, has, it used to be the transfer tax was divided in thirds. We would get a third, um, farmland preservation would get a third, farmland protection would get a third, and the state would get a third. Um, with, through the efforts of our, of our local legislators, state legislators, um, they amended that several years ago that the state's portion would be phased out over 10 years. Uh, and then changes were made this current legislative session to even um, uh, escalate that so that we get the state's por- the total portion from the state in five years. So um, we'll get two thirds of the transfer tax and uh, farmland preservation will get the other third. Um, our grant writers, um, several years ago under the, um, the, the, the direction of uh, council pre- then council president uh, Copenhaver, um, we, uh, established a professional grants writing department uh, and they've brought in just millions and millions of dollars um, our um, day report center um, which is which was formed in August of 2016 uh, is uh, this this next fiscal year through um, uh, miscellaneous revenues that they generate through drug testing they've become the the drug testing uh, center uh, of choice for the state. Uh, we do all the drug testing for the local state agencies, uh, and and then most and a lot of that is is supported by grants. Uh, our DRC and Recovery Resource Center will be completely self-sufficient um, next year, self-supporting next year through um, through grants and miscellaneous revenues. There will be no local general fund uh, revenues that go in support of of those two budgets and. Um, that's about three million dollars. Uh, our planning departments and our engineering department. Uh, again, it's this is all a uh, a function of the economy. You know, we are you know we 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 are the the economic engine for the state of West Virginia uh, through the, f- the the various fees that they generate. Um, our um, engineering department and planning department is self sufficient. So um, we've been very the council has been very diligent and very, um, uh, again, very, very good stewards of the, of the tax dollars. Um, we have not put any recurring expenses. You know, our, our, coal reverend, our coal severance, you and I talked not lot long ago, our coal severance for next fiscal year uh, is projected to be about $225,000. Um, we don't put any recurring expenses um, we, we don't fund any recurring expenses with coal severance. We use that for, to fund some of the outside agencies, uh, some of the nonprofits. So, um, just, just been, we're, we're just very blessed to be where we're at. And, uh, largest expenses on the budget this year, Alan? Uh, public safety. Um, you know, we, when I came here, um, we did not have career firefighters. Uh, at the direction, uh, the leadership of, again, Council Person um, uh, Stubblefield, Council President Stubblefield, and, and then uh, Eddie, uh, before he became Council Person, um, we were the first county in the state um, to, to have career firefighters. Um, it took us many, many, many years to get formally recognized this, as the state, uh, as, a, as a fire depart- department, and just actually received that final um, designation last year uh, and and got our FDID number in November. So we have the only uh, county career um, uh, firefighting staff in in the state. We have 22 career firefighters now. Um, You know, I talked earlier about the need for additional public safety. We we could hire if if we had the, the funding um, all we have um, career firefighters in all the, the five VFDs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, five days a week, except for Baker Heights. Uh, Baker Heights has 24/7 uh, firefighters. 
The other four VFDs have requested 24-7 firefighters, which re would require another 24 career uh, firefighting staff. We just don't have the revenues to, to do it. So uh, public safety, the sheriff has indicated, I know, and Eddie can talk a little bit more about that. About that. He's had ongoing conversations with the sheriff about law enforcement needs. Uh, of course, as, as the county grows, our population is about 130,000 uh, people now. Um, you know, we have about 120,000 people that come through the front door of the Judicial Center every year. We have the, the busiest judi Judicial Center in the state. So that means more court martials. It means more prosecuting attorneys. It means more staff for the circuit clerk's office. So it's, you know, the, you, know, I, you know, I tell everyone the good news is we're the fastest growing county in the state. The bad news is we're the fastest growing county in the state. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's lots of challenges. And I want to I want to back up just for a minute, uh, Rob. Uh, when Alan was talking about this budget, uh, Alan, I can tell you, through experience, he knows where every penny is in this budget. Alan lays out the basic format. He does all the projections, and he's just not pulling these numbers, you know, from thin air. They've developed a a database where they can go back and look at the trends and see where see where they are, see where their uh, revenue increases uh, and their expenditures have been. So it's truly almost down to a science with him. Uh, he and Gary work very closely on, on building this budget. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty nice to, I don't, I don't challenge him when it comes to those numbers because that's his expertise. I mean, he's, he's absolutely all down to the penny. Um, and and I've I've known this for quite a while. You know, when I worked as a department head, I, I would say, you know, Alan. He said, "Well, I know you're getting really close on this." And he'd flip up his. He's got this big book, you know, and uh, it, it must weigh about 50 pounds. But he'll he'll flip to it and he, and he'll show you exactly where you are. Um, I mean, it's 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 really well done, and he he does protect us. He keeps us out of trouble. Uh, his revenue estimates are typically uh, conservative, and uh, you know it's just like it's just like uh, the next fiscal budget. You know, he's already thinking about that next fiscal budget, even though he's not going to be here. He says, "Look, you know, with the with the interest rates, have a little bit of slowdown uh, in our uh, permits and, and new homes being built. I would not suggest any reoccurring cost come out of this particular budget. Wait and see where where you're going to be." So just, you know, professional guidance like that is, is really what we need. You know, I'm, I'm a guy that, look, I know, we need, I know we need more officers. I know we need more firefighters. You know, and I'm constantly, not just I, we, are, are flipping every rock that we can find to see how we can fund. And, uh, you know, number one is, is the service to the public. And number two, for officer and firefighter safety. You know, and John, you know about that. So those those are the things that really concern us about as our population continues to increase so will the cause of service uh you know we know that we're going to have to add additional 911 folks at some point uh as long as as well as police and fire and EMS you know now we just went through a EMS uh a rate increase uh you know we've just had a public hearing on the commercial rates so uh once the council decides what they're going to do there, I think that they'll be okay for a couple of years uh, with that increase to be able to, to upstaff their crews, uh, which they've already done. They've, they've got extra crews on the road right now. So, uh, but there's still more to do. And, uh, you know, it just, it takes a lot of money, especially on those, uh, when you want to keep your people competitive and uh, keep them, you know, keep them paid uh, so they can raise their families. Yes, as far as that budget, you both have talked about keeping it a conservative budget. Are you much like the state of West Virginia as a whole in by holding that conservative budget at the end of a fiscal year, there tends to be some excess? And, and if so, how does that kind of get handled? Does that roll into the next budget, or do you look to use it in certain ways? The, the council, all counties, um, for all intent and purposes, have what, what you know, we, we have to maintain what we call an unencumbered fund balance. Um, the, the majority of our revenue comes in, as I stated, through, through real estate and property, personal property taxes. 
So your tax bill goes out, and once the council lays the levy, and they'll lay the levy in, in, in April, um, the tax bill will go out. And as you know, the majority of the tax payments are made in August and early September, and then again in March, particularly when the banks are making their escrow payments, half of their, your property, your real estate taxes uh, up front, and then the second half when they're due. They have that period between July 1st and mid-August that we still have to, to make payroll and pay our bills. So um, f f in order for us to do that, we have to maintain an unencumbered fund balance of about $5 million. So when we put next year's, when, when, we, when I put together next year's budget, I projected an unencumbered fund balance of about $5.5 .5 million, which is the, the revenue which in, in, in unencumbered fund balance is nothing more than what the council has in the bank uh, come July 1st after um, the, the bank reconciliation has been done. Um, and then that will be used to pay, to make payroll, um, you know, our property casualty insurance uh, bills about a million dollars. That comes due the first quarter. So they have to have that unencumbered fund balance, that cash reserve to meet bills for the, for the first two months of the year. So. Uh, again, pretty usually pretty conservative with with that. Mm -hmm. um, five point five million is what I project next year. Um, I'll know I'll know better probably the end of of May. Um, but I think that's a pretty pretty solid figure. Probably coming a little closer to to six million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't want to say six million dollars and then and then miss that. So um again airing on the side and, and i and i will say that the council um they did bump that up just a little bit um f to, to to meet that some of the needs of the of the outside agencies but that's pretty close so we need that cash reserve to make our bills mm -hmm. um, our payroll with benefits is about 24 million dollars um so we want to make sure that we can we can pay our employees so that's roughly half of the budget it is. is is taken yep. in that way yeah and you know someone says well you know you've doubled the budget since you've been with the county how did you do it well you know it wasn't by design um but when i came in 2005 we didn't have an it department everything was was um uh contracted out now we have an it department with about 22 uh, employees uh, we provide a lot of services to outside agencies uh, including the, the city of Martinsburg and most of the VFDs. Um, county attorney was was contractual through Bowles Rice. We now have a, a full-time legal department with two attorneys. Um, we, As I said, we added 24, 22 career firefighters that we didn't have before. Probably had 30-something deputies when you We did. We now have, with the council just authorized an, an additional mm -hmm. deputy last week, so now we have 67 uniformed mm -hmm. deputies. We didn't have the day report center. We didn't have the full-time court martial, uh, court security staff that we have. We didn't have recovery resources. What was your jail cost in 2003 compared to today? Well, our jail costs, you know, we're one of the few counties uh, in the state where the jail cost has actually decreased over the past five years. Uh, but that's due to the efforts of the council through the, the Dave Report Center keeping the, the nonviolent offenders out of the out of the regional jail. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've added the grants department in um, a couple of years ago, 2015. No, 2017 we started the central garage um, where we do our, all of our minor fleet maintenance in-house so um, the council has added um, some positions um, due to you know public safety uh, public well-being but then also um, for example adding you know our DRC has 44 full-time employees now as I said most of that you know next year they will com be completely self-supporting um, we just became a licensed behavioral health center last year so we can do Medicaid billing. Um, so um, they've, they've added positions, they've added departments, but it was for the public, public good. Now, some of these agencies you say are becoming self-supporting, but then you also <coughs> say as a result of some grants and, and such, don't grants go away? Well, you know, all of our employees have, that are grant funded, as it, when, when, when they're hired, we're saying, well, you know, this, this position is grant funded, and in the event that the grant would go away, the position could also. Um, most of the grant funded positions, in fact, right now, all of the grant funded positions we have now are related to uh, recovery efforts, um, and there's a, an awful lot of money out there. 
But as I said, we became a licensed behavioral health center last fiscal year. Um, medic, the Medicaid billing that we will that that we've been doing now for I guess since November first um, will will generate probably close to um, once it's it's in full effect probably close to about a million dollars a year. Um, we've set up that and it's all being done. It's all all the Medicaid. Uh, 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 payments are being made through wire transfer we have those wire transfers going to a special a special revenue account it's not part of our general fund um, uh, general fund uh, budget uh, and we've done that in the event that someday um, you know future council people uh, if the the grants would go away we'll have that special revenue account that will be available to fund um, our recovery, our recovery efforts. As you know, you know we would like to think that uh, as fa as effective as our recovery resources center is and our day report center is, that that someday they they go out of business. You know we have we have three hundred. I think when Tim was in last week with three hundred and twenty, um, we're at capacity. That's on day. Yeah, day report uh, centers. Home confinement. I'm sorry. No, day report centers about 320. Yeah, that's right. Home, uh, home confinement. Conf 124. Yeah, 124. Um, and and we have waiting lists to get in. So we would like to say that someday the day report center is not going to be needed, but I don't think that'll ever happen. Alan, what's the rainy day fund balance? I know when you started, it was kept in a jelly bean jar. Yeah, um, when when I came, the the rainy day fund was was slightly less than than five dollars. Um, we were anywhere from 45 to, to 90 days in arrears on, in a lot of our bills. Um, we now pay all of our bills within 14 days of receipt, and our rainy day fund as of this morning is about $7.3 million. Uh, and I think that will increase slightly at the end of this fiscal year. I, uh, I've recommended to the council that if the unencumbered fund balance comes in a little higher than what projected that, um, that we take that money and, and put it in the rainy day fund. Does that contribute to your stellar bond rating? It does. Um, you know, we we meet with Moody's. Um, we are every time we do a bond rating, we meet, we meet with Moody's. Um, they would like to see our um, our rainy day fund at somewhere between fifteen and twenty percent. Um, so when they look at our revenues, and, and Eddie is set through two bond. Two bond reviews now with Moody's. Did you stay uh, awake for those, Eddie? Or were you? No, it's interesting. It, <laughs> it, it really was. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're you know the 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 last bond rating that the last bond issue we did a refinancing in 2020. It was our 2020 C bond. Um, our interest rate was 1.66 percent, um, based on on our financial strength. Of course, as you know, you know interest rates have gone up. Um, when we uh, floated, a, we, we did a, a $10 million uh, bond in December of 2022. Um, we're getting ready to put on a three-story addition to the Day Report Center. Um, that came in at 3.04%, which we thought was still pretty good, you know, considering where the, you know, where the prime rate was at that time. Well, say, and some of those things have changed. You know, we are now, they don't compare us to the, to the rest of the state of West Virginia. We're in a metropolitan area, and that's how they look at us financially. So, you know, when you, when we go up, like, against, in comparison to, like, Loudoun County, Montgomery County, you know, probably two of the richest counties in the country, uh, it's it's a tough, tough to keep up with them. But, sure. But we, our bond rating, you know, and it's, you know, I give Alan and the previous council, you know, all the credit. Uh, you know, we were equal to our insured. Uh, the person that the company is insuring us had the exact same bond rating that we had. So those those things, they mean something. And, uh, you know, I, I'm proud to, to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, I hope that the people in the county understand that. Uh, we're we're trying to do very very good stuff with the money that they that they give us to use, uh, t in providing the services that are needed. I want to ask you about the government affairs organization that you hired to represent Berkeley County in Charleston to do some lobbying on behalf of the county, get some things moved, uh, get to expedite meetings uh, with people in Charleston. I know you had a, uh, you were down there uh, this year, Eddie, Steve Catlett, I think, too. Uh, tell me, are you getting back the money that you're investing in the company? There are some people in the county who are completely opposed to that investment. They feel like it's a job that you should be doing yourselves or our Eastern Panhandle delegation should be doing that it is not money well spent. Tell me about the investment on this and the return. Yeah, it's, uh, 
you know, I was I was one that voted no uh, on the uh, on the contract you know, of of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I still today think that's a lot of money. Um, I can tell you that that they do an excellent job for us. I mean, uh, yesterday. Uh, Yesterday, uh, uh, Summer was involved in a discussion, you know. Summer for, Barrett. Summer Barrett was involved in a, a, a big discussion that we had about uh, some revenue that we could get from the state for our uh, our water expansion. You know, the water district's going to get ready to go through a, a major uh, upgrade. And uh, so she plays a, she played a big role in that uh, process, as, as she has been. Uh, you know, she got us in front of the people we needed to be in front of uh, at Charleston. And I know that she provides them with a lot of information that otherwise they would not get. Um, I mean, she she does an excellent job for us. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, we worked we worked real hard, and she did too on the jail bill. Uh, had this jail bill passed the way it was currently written, it was going to cost us about another five hundred thousand dollars. But as it is, it's going to save us about two hundred thousand. So, so basically the cost of the contract. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's real close. But then the other thing is, you know, one of the thing, another thing we worked on that, that did not make it out of, uh, out of the session was the uh, insurance premium tax for the volunteer fire departments. You know, currently every, every volunteer fire department in this state uh, gets about forty-four dollars to $48,000 a year from the state, and that all comes from the insurance premium tax that you pay on your homeowners. Uh, but the, the inequity is... You know, we have five volunteer fire departments in this county where McDowell or some of the other southern states, and, and some of us because of the terrain, uh, have anywhere from 17 to 21 fire departments. So that county could, in fact, be receiving about $900,000, where Berkeley County is going to receive about $220,000. So there's a huge inequity there, uh, even with the insurance premium tax. So. You know, just trying to find the balance, uh, you know, I don't want to hurt those departments. You know, I have no desire to do that at all. But I also feel as if Berkey County, once again, is not being treated fairly when it comes to insurance premium tax return to the volunteer fire departments. So that was a that was a bill that we worked pretty hard on, uh, and it, it, it didn't make it. But that's okay. It We'll go back at it again next year. The question is... Is there nothing in regards to the work that Summer is, is doing down there? Is this not work that you or the other four commissioners or the uh, dozen members of the Eastern Panhandle delegation couldn't be doing on behalf of the area themselves? I can tell you I cannot be there 60 days uh, straight. I cannot. Uh, and I don't know of another council person that can. I don't know that they would have the skill set to do all the things that, that she does. Her communication skills are excellent. She understands the issues, and not just she. Uh, her, she has a partner, uh, Dan. Um, they're, they're very good at what they do. Uh, Dan is a former senator. Uh, he's a former delegate, so he. It's Daniel Hall, I think. Daniel right? Hall. Yeah. He can get. He has those relationships. You know, Summer has those relationships mm -hmm. from working in the governor's office in the past. Uh, I don't know how we could be better taken care of. I honestly don't. You know, they do an excellent job. Is it a lot of money? Yes, it is. To, to, to Eddie's point, um, the current contract that we have with the, with the government relations firm that, that the, the county's dealing with, um, it, it uh, expires at the end of, of uh, November of 2023. So um, the council will have to make the decision this summer whether they want to continue to pursue that or not. And if so, it'll have to be put out for, for competitive bid. Um, it was originally a one-year contract with the option to renew it for two out years. Um, there was some discussion uh, at the end of last calendar year, 2022, as to whether the council was going to renew it. And um, they did negotiate the price of, of the, the contract down a little bit. Um, but everyone understands that it will be put out for if the council decides they want to, to, to retain a firm to, to do this type of work uh, in, in Charleston, that it will be put out for competitive bid at the end of, of this calendar year. The, the problem, one of the problems is, you know, when, when the legislative session um, is, is taking place is the same time that all the counties are putting their, their budgets together. So we actually start um, the, the budget process in, in September, um, but the first 
um, you know, we we send out all the packets and we you know we we get the request in and we put them into into a, a spreadsheet. Um, the council actually does formal budget hearings starting the second Thursday in January, and the budget process isn't typically done until early to mid March. Uh, and during that time, they have to meet as the board of equalization and review by law, um, and they have to meet at least every three days. So not only are they meeting on Thursdays, they're meeting on Tuesdays. So for Tuesdays and Tuesday and Thursdays through the month of February and into early March, they're meeting twice a week. Um, it would be different if you know they were just walking across the street to to testify before a subcommittee or uh, to to uh, lobby for some legislation that we need. But as you know. Um, you know, I know Eddie's done it in, in less time, but it takes anywhere from four and a half to five hours to get to, to Charleston. Mm -hmm. um, that's not an easy trip for, for our, our... Less time than four and a half hours, Eddie? <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> John Gilstrap. Do we have an idea with the growth of the county in terms of the... I know the interwoven thing is in, in Martinsburg, but it's certainly part of, of this area and, and all the new uh, housing developments that are going in. What percentage, do we have a feel for what percentage of the new folks who are living here are actually working here too, as opposed to commuting out? I don't have that, John. I don't have that information. I know that there's a lot of people that are now teleworking, mm -hmm. working from home, even with the feds. Uh, they may have to go to their office uh, once a week or, or something of that neighborhood. But uh, I'd, I'd say that that number is probably uh, increasing daily. Uh, and I know that some of the federal, federal agencies are wanting to try to get their people back to work because they have a lot of Imagine real estate. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of real estate sitting there that, that doesn't have anybody in the seat. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I, I don't have that number. I don't know how you, how we would get that. You know, uh, when Sandy Hamilton was the uh, executive director of the Development Authority several years ago, she did have those those numbers. Um, I don't know they've been whether they've been updated in the past, you know, five or six I haven't years. Heard so, anything. Um, that would come. We could get that. That would come from the development authority. They would keep track of that. Matt Miller, I just wanted to go back when you talked about a competitive bid would have to go out as far as as rehiring or continuing a contract to have representation. Are you required in any way to ultimately take the lowest bid, or when you get competitive bids, you can look through those and still make the choice the it, way you want to? It's, it's the lowest responsible bid, so it depends on the level of service, you know. The, and the definition the, of responsible. The, right. The, yeah, you know, you know a, lot of, a lot of folks say I shouldn't be responsible for a $50 million budget. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, who might argue? Um, so, yeah, I mean, some of, you know, when, when it's a, you know, it's a construction bid, it's mm -hmm. pretty black and white. Um, when, it's, when it's a bid for services, be it, um, you know, broadband, you know, broadband study or, you know, government affairs, you know, uh, services, it's, it's a little bit more subjective. Overall revenue sources in the county, you're you're pretty strapped, right? At 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 how you can make money, uh, unless the legislature opens up other opportunities. Oh, that yeah. you talked about that one percent. Yeah, know? I mean the the, uh, the legislature controls all of your revenue uh, abilities <laughs> for sure. You know, one of the things we've been requesting. You know, we do a uh, every fall we do a legislative list of legislative priorities. Mm -hmm. And then we have what we call a, a legislative summit where we bring in all the, the, the local representatives, senators and delegations, and we prioritize what our legislative priorities are for, next, for the next session. Um, you know, one of the things that have been at the top of the list um, for the past five or six years is that 1% sales tax. Um, and, and, and we've requested that they, 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 they write the legislation in such a way that it gives each individual county the option to oppose that 1% if they so choose. Um, so that if, you know, Berkeley County wanted to do it, they could. If Jefferson County didn't want to do it, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to. Um, you know, my thought is, you know, let the local elected officials make that decision. Um, we did some projections. That 1% sales tax, particularly if it if it would encompass all the county, including the city of Martinsburg, would generate conservatively about $10 million a year. 
Um, and, and, and we've even told the legislators, you give us that 1% sales tax and we will give you something in writing that, that says that we will dedicate it, that dedicate that to public safety, that we will use it for law enforcement and we will use it for career firefighters. And if the taxpayers aren't happy with it, then they vote the council out of office. Yeah, or we we'll take it another step forward and explain to the public exactly what our, our desires are to do with that one cent sales tax, a penny on the dollar, uh, and let the, put it on a referendum. Let the people vote if they want to increase uh, their purchase power or actually decrease their purchase power maybe by 1%. Eddie, in, in reality at the moment, you can't get a 1% sales tax and you're not going to get out of the state legislature because there's no chance a Republican-dominated legislature is going to vote right. for a, a, a tax increase. However, if you could rework the way your way around zoning to include impact fees around yes. new development – you might be able to get somewhere. Is there a way to backdoor impact fees without selling? Uh, you know, I've, I've got some friends who are, I, I've, I won't call it, they're not long-term friends, but people I've developed relationships with, and I've had those discussions with uh, some of the folks in our uh, uh, delegation, and uh, they, don't, they don't have the strength to do it. They, they don't have the desire to do that. They, they, they feel as if it would be political suicide because I've asked them to, to remove the zoning requirement to be able to give us the impact fees and, and try and let the growth pay for itself. Um, and I've never, I've no never understood that argument as to, you, know, you, you set something up and then people move in, which is great, you want growth, right? You but have the, to have But it. the people that move in cause the seams to burst and require more services. Yes. So what's the, what's the hesitancy to saying to people who move in, you have to pay your share along the way for causing some of the yeah, some of the strain. It's a, it's a struggle, and it's uh, the American way. Pay for what you use. You know, it, it's, there's one sentence in that section of the code that needs to be stricken, and uh, and, and then the council could decide if that's what they want to do or not. You know, I mean, why is it tied to zoning? Do we know? I don't know. Just because just, the legislature feels like as long as there's some kind of grand scheme of how you're going to grow? or Yeah, and there's there's, there's three or four different requirements in that zoning or, uh, requirement uh, for impact fees, and we meet uh, everything else, but we just we don't have comprehensive zoning for the whole county. So Yeah, and, um, you know, I, I live in a zoned, uh, a zoned uh, area, and I, I can tell you that – they can rezone it. They can re, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on zoning. It's, it's, it's. I want to say it's not worth the paper it's written on, but it's not worth the paper it's written on because if you have enough money, you can get anything changed, even if you have zoning. So, you know, yeah. and, and the code will allow what they call capacity capacity improvement fees. Um, they're, they're called SIFs, um, and and the council has approved capacity improvement fees for the water district and the sewer district, mm -hmm. which allows them to, um, you know, as new developments go in, they, they, they impose these these capacity improvement fees uh, on the developers to help pay for the, the infrastructure that's needed for water and sewer. But there's no way for the council, you know, as, as we, and I call it the westward migration, as folks move from the metropolitan area uh, and, and COVID actually helped us mm -hmm. uh, because it's easier to social distance in Berkeley County than it is in Montgomery County or Prince George's County. You know, the cost of living is, is lower. Real estate prices are lower. Quality life issues are lower. But when they come here, they expect the same services that they got mm -hmm. in Montgomery and Prince George's County. Yeah, there's a reason the taxes are lower. That's exactly right. right. So, you know, we don't have the, 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 the revenue source to add deputies to add firefighters um you know i get calls all you know, the things that growth causes i gotta cut you off because i gotta get to a commercial break go. here alan <laughs> but but uh, appreciate the hour it went uh, fast it did